Fascinating. Right. Towers have represented down through the millennium our ability to protect ourselves. And and it's a tower of safety. That's why you 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 see the the Watchtower Society. You know the Watchtower. They're they're protecting humanity from the future. And um, yeah, they really did take away uh, the sense of security of Americans. Oh, they can come right into uh, right into the heart of America and take down a symbol of America's financial greatness and, and strike with impunity. Um, yeah, and and also important to to the uh, symbolism, like you have been, you know, your questions along, as we've gone through today have been asking me about occult symbolism. And symbolism is very critical to the occult and magic. They love magic numbers. And uh, the Twin Towers were in 11. You keep seeing the numbers 9-11 repeated throughout so many things involved with the 9-11 event. Um, the, the Twin Towers themselves make an 11. 11 has been called Devil's Dozen. It's, 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 uh, um, you go through all of the different elements of 9-11 and you just see occult symbology repeated every which way. And, um, and, and so uh, what, what happens is, is, is going back to your question on the mind control, uh, the people that, that create these events, they tell their people, now watch, you can tell that we did it because our symbolism is all over this thing. You see what I'm saying? Like uh, Apollo 13, remember? Apollo 13 was the spacecraft that, that got into trouble. They, they picked yeah. certain numbers and they, they have all of this they, they have all of this number symbology involved. For me, it's really difficult because I was never into the occult and as a Christian, I'm I'm kind of turned off by all this numerology and everything, but I have to report the facts as they are. And unfortunately, these people are crazy and nuts about numerology. They're into astrology. They're into okay, this date is the right date for this. You know, it wasn't by it wasn't by accident that they picked nine eleven to attack um, the 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 buildings. Um, it was done for a reason. Um, it, it was done because of the the representative power of these numbers. Um, uh, they they look for what the best magical significance, the most. Uh, and and so anyway, where I'm getting at is 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 their their handwriting, so to speak, is written through, throughout the event because of all of the the occult symbology, so then they're able to come to their people and say, see what we've done? It's sort of like you pick up, here's a good analogy that every, every one of your listeners can, can do. Look at an American $1 bill. Well, the way the Illuminati are going to talk to their people is they're going to say, or, or even the Masons, which is an extension of the Illuminati, Freemasonry is like the glove that fits on the hand. Um, they're going to tell their people, you don't think that we have power? Look, we got our symbols on the $1 bill, you know. And you flip an American $1 bill to the back side and you see this uh, Egyptian pyramid. What does a pyramid have to do with America? You see what I mean? But they sit there and laugh to their own people. You know, yeah. we run things because, look, we got our symbols all over this. You know, so the person America who's a slave... America, America itself set up as like this clean slate, if you like, with no history of bloodshed apart from the Native American Indians or American Indians and the policemen of the world. America to the rescue, as you say. Um, <laughs> you, call it, uh, you, you were astonished to see uh, on the day, I think it was, that you were switching channels between three different news channels and you could see what you term as priming happening. It looks like the work of Bin Laden, etc., etc. 
Well, and you mentioned how astonishing it was that we're all running from the same script. And uh, as, you, as you may well be aware, Building 7 is standing in the background of Jane Stanley giving a BBC report, and she's reporting that Building 7 uh, <laughs> has fallen. And it's actually in the background there, so there's a bit of a bit of a delay in the information getting to her there. Yeah, uh, she jumped the gun. She was already yeah. showing it having uh, fallen before it fell. So I think that was a little ahead of the script. Yeah, I think personally that was deliberate. Actually, <laughs> no way of saying, "Look, we did this." You know. <laughs> yeah, we've got it in Blues, and we've got it in The Simpsons. We've got it in the Illuminati card game. It's it's. It's in uh, various pilot TV programs, the X Files, uh, to, to, to the to the latter actually. I mean, um, but would would be you, you mentioned uh, you mentioned about it being um, a trigger right. um, that was set up long ago. So you have mass media around the world all looking at the same thing, much like the trauma-based mind control you claim that the Kennedy assassination was, was for, why they did it in plain sight, if you'll yes. forgive the pun. But what are these triggers, these mind control triggers? And, you know, do we all have them because we've grown up with TV? Um, what are the triggers? Here's what I started discovering when I was trying to dismantle their mind control. They create... They look like people to the rest of us, but they're really mind-controlled robots. And in inside of their minds, they create internal mechanisms, and they create these internal clocks that their programming is working off of. And one of the things that the Illuminati's created is Armageddon scenarios. Um, some of the natural disasters that we see happening around the world are being boosted or actually caused by by the Illuminati, by 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 technology, um, and, and earthquakes and things like this are are being created. You've got this Armageddon script, and different people throughout the world, uh, especially here in the United States and in England. They have different roles to play. And these clocks that are set internally in the mind control programming, they don't operate off of, off of. Um, I mean, there's different clocks, but the, the clock I'm referring to is not operating off of, uh, off of seconds and minutes, but what it's operating off of is these watershed events. And so the mind-controlled slave who's got programming to do, like Armageddon programming, he has some, some role to play in, in everything that this big elaborate script that they have. When he sees Princess die, uh, a, a die or 9-11 or some of these other events, it clicks that clock that's internal clock in the programming. It clicks it. Um, you know, it, it, so that's how the clock is turning on their programming. And then that's determining, uh, what their little part, when their little part's going to be played. This was the, anyway, uh, that makes more sense if, if, if the person has read, my mind control books. Um, sometimes it's it's hard to know what to say because uh, I don't want to get ahead of the understanding of my listeners out there. Um, but that that right there is uh, one of the purposes behind 9/11. 9/11 has served lots of purposes. Uh, maybe you're aware, Patrick that those buildings had been condemned by New York City and were going to have to be torn down and there were there were no there was no way to financially tear them down they were going to have to to abandon those buildings in like a year because they had been condemned as being um unsafe and so it was right. very very handy that the man who bought it 
uh, insured them for a terrorist attack and paid millions of dollars, and then when the terrorist attack took place, was able, able to recover billions of dollars for the millions that he had invested. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Rockefeller himself built the Twin Towers, you know, so, um, yeah. It's a bit it's a bit like hiring the devil for your, for your children's tea party, really, you know, <laughs> Rockefeller building the towers. Um, uh, you talked about implanting the symbolism before the event, and we've talked about um, the various techniques they've used in film and TV and advertising to, to prep the public, if you like. Um, the Twin Towers themselves, the, the jacking and Boaz of the, of the Mason's Lodge, the pillars, the two pillars. And uh, one chap that has done a lot of research uh, into the symbolism and the ritual sacrifice nature of 9-11 is um, Glenn Zamanov. But he's a, of Russian abstraction, but uh, from New Jersey. Um, we are changed, New Jersey. He talks about um, the Twin Towers being kind of spiritual tuning forks, if you like, that, that send out a, a massive occult uh, signal uh, across the planet because they're all watching. Everyone's watching it on TV, so it's almost like tuning forks. That's quite an interesting sort of slant on it. Um, I'm not qualified to sort of comment on it, but it's an interesting slant. But um, uh, we had a similar, um, we had our 9-11 events, if you like, in London, with the, the blowing up of the three tube stations and a road vehicle on 7-7. And I know you're not a great fan of um, numerology, but I wondered if 7-7 if was a particularly occult uh, number together. Um, yeah, seven seven is is a cult. Um, well, when when it comes to numerology, all of these numbers have significance. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, 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 it for sure, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm I'm sure if we went and studied uh, all of the the numerology of your tube explosions, we would we would um, come away with, and maybe somebody's done that. Uh, we would come away with with a lot of occult symbology there. And well, we had we had all the prepping, and we spoke about the symbology in movies before nine eleven. There was none, or next to none, for seven seven. But uh, again, they had. Uh, an exercise running for for three tube stations on a road vehicle that very morning, as uh, which is admitted, as um, as nine eleven had a, a drill running that morning. So when the drill goes live and um, it, the real event actually begins to happen, everything is in order to be able to to cover it up if they get caught or a few patsy bombers thrown into the mix and the job done. But as far as 9-11 goes, it's got to be the biggest false flag attack after the Reichstag or, or um, the Gulf of Tonkin incident <laughs> that kicked off the Vietnam War. That, I mean, it's a multi-level, uh, a multi-leveled, multi-faceted attack on the human psyche of the planet. But what it, it kicked off the new century, it, apparently their calendar starts and their, their millennium begins in 2001, so... That this was their project for the new American century, as it's as it's um, published twice. But um, it's a big question. Uh, one I'm sure you may be able to answer. Um, but what it, it being a multifaceted, multi-leveled false flag attack on the consciousness of mankind, uh, humanity. Uh, what what was its um, primary goal? Did it have a primary purpose? Oh, the, uh, yeah, uh, as, as you were, as, as we've discussed here, there were um, a whole list of things that it accomplished, but uh, it, uh, people are willing to trade uh, their, their uh, freedom for security, and 
So they wanted us to ask them to bring in this tyranny. They want us to be happy slaves. You know, please put the handcuffs on me so I'm safer. You know, please put me in maximum security so that I'm secure. And uh, so that was was a big reason for it. Uh, they had the the Patriot Act had been written a long time before. But as soon as 9-11 happened, why, the congressmen didn't even read it. They just automatically, robotically signed this this uh, Patriot Act in. And uh, Patriot Act, first Patriot Act and the following one uh, are horrendous documents of tyranny. Um, all kinds of crazy things have happened over here in America because of them. But the people are are willing to blindly accept it because 9-11 was like a catalyst of a chemical reaction, to make an analogy. The chemical reaction being to take away our freedom. And um, because 9-11 happened, why people are so afraid you, they're using fear to stampede us so that was the primary purpose was uh to get us stampeded into giving away our freedom and then another uh purpose that it served was to give the united states ostensibly the right to go in and attack iraq in afghanistan I mean, any thinking person realizes there is no connection between 9/11 and Iraq and Afghanistan. But, but, yeah. And then, and then the British were right there, following us into Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, that just goes back to something earlier we were saying that the the boundaries between the United States and the UK are are uh, not hard and fast boundaries. They're uh, soft boundaries. Um, United States is really much more of an adjunct to the UK than people might want to give credit for. I, I know some people in, in England still call us the colonies, and that might be a little bit old-fashioned and extreme, but in some ways it's probably accurate. <laughs> Uh, so it's, we've tried to get um, an insight into the into the mindset of these creatures, if you like. How um, significant is the is the the understanding of the, uh, psychopathy, the the psychopathic nature of people? Um, there's been a lot a lot of studies uh, coming out in the last few years, focusing um, solely on what is a psychopath. Why do they seem to be the top politicians, the top CEOs? But, and it's more widely understood now than ever before in history, and I'm not sure the elite like it very much at all. It's um, they're being exposed. Um, psychopathic brains are slightly different. In your talk, you, when you speak of some of the triggers that have happened to some of the mind control victims you've, you've been helping, that their brains are actually different. The same is found with psychopathic nature, that their brains are physically different, that they have no conscience, um, totally ruthless, and very cunning, and great at lying. So um, people seem to be born psychopaths um, at the very top, whether they be a high-ranking Freemason or not. Um, it would seem that <laughs> you only have to look at Tony Blair and you can see it in his eyes. I mean, how, how much uh, study have you given uh, psychopathy? Okay, uh, that I'm I'm so glad that you're so well informed and you're talking about very important things for our audience. Um, I have always been fascinated with psychology. Um, when I was in high school, I uh, didn't feel like I could learn enough from the r regular courses, so I did an independent study through my high school where I had 20 uh, books uh, sent in and, and, and did a, a self-study program that I got credit for, um, got an A in. So I, I, I've been fascinated by human psychology. Um, 
one of the things that that comes out when you when you study the mind control is that the brains of these program multiples is like you were saying physically different we're not talking about people that are are physically like the rest of us their brains are physically different um and uh they don't think the same way uh very early on in the life of of somebody who's being born into illuminati bloodline they're already doing things while the the child is a fetus in the in the mother to manipulate the brain and uh then after the child is born and they're they're subjected to trauma-based mind control uh they will be be uh required to participate in things like like rituals where the child has to sacrifice another child they uh they bring in expendable children and then these illuminati children have to kill uh the child have to stab the child and what that does to the 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 psychology of the 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 thinking of the person as a child it, long story short these people do not have the ability to empathize um i think one of the best uh gauges on that should be used in, in human um psychology in in it is an empathy gauge how well can the person mm-hmm. empathize with another person and these people are not mm-hmm. able to empathize at all uh like you say they're psychopaths um what's frightening about their psychopathic nature like Ted Bundy and others is they're not able to empathize you take out of hitler who was a program multiple um and and he was he was he was part of an uh, illuminati agenda uh it was a whole script that they played out but you know hitler put himself up in, in the role of being the most german of germans he, he you know he presented himself to to the german people as loving the german nation more than anybody and yet when it came to having any empathy for the german people he totally lacked any empathy you know um most of the world world if we if we just we well, want we'll build you up into a fantastic nation you're the master race oh it looks like we're losing you obviously weren't worthy um i i do you know what I I you came in garbled so I didn't really understand but I think you were making a comment on Hitler's lack of empathy for the German people. I mean you see that lack yeah. of empathy in the way he treated the victims of Stalingrad, the 6th army that were surrounded. Um the fact that that a quarter million German uh troops uh died um uh very uh uh a, a tr- um excruciating painful uh uh death um over a period of several months um there at Stalingrad meant nothing to him um as the as the allied forces were were coming into uh Germany in the last couple months of the war and he was giving the order uh throughout Germany to destroy anything of value you know uh, no empathy for what w- what was going to what the survivors of the war were going to going to have to go through um this is the type of uh person we're talking about ruling the world um they're they're incapable of having a true empathy with with uh, their fellow man um he is incapable of having a whole lot of empathy for their own family um it, it it's it and this is this explains why these ruthless people have been able to create one war after the other for us <laughs> you know um 
Exactly, yeah. Let history speak for yep. itself what they're all about. Um, of course, there's, a, you know, having, having been uh, incarcerated for eight years and out of circulation, when, when you're incarcerated, your whole focus is on uh, sure. the, the here and now there. And um, it's possible that, that, that I knew that sure. story and have just forgotten about it, but Wow, that's that's quite a that's, that's quite a story. I I did have um, you know uh, I had a woman that came to me uh, through a friend. She had escaped from being a human sacrifice, and then um, a friend of hers knew about me and knew that that I exposed this kind of stuff and managed to bring her to me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know how to, it's a long story, but let's put it this way. Let's see if I can say it real shortly. She she managed to escape the human sacrifice, but the system was after her still. And when I say the system, the, the, the judicial system wasn't there to protect her. You know, the judges and the police weren't there to protect her from the people that were trying to sacrifice her, they were in cahoots with with the Illuminati coven to try to get her back. <laughs> so the, you know, again we have the wolf guarding the chicken coop. Yeah, it reminds me of the film. If people want to get an idea of what these characters are really like, um, what's Rosemary's baby or something like that. You know, it really is like that. It's worse than Eyes Wide Shut. It, it's actually worse than we. <laughs> good people like us to actually imagine. So um, we, we were talking about um, we were talking about mind control generally um, in the media, and um, there's another aspect of of mind control that called HARP. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but HARP is a an antenna array around the world. Yes, uh, there's one in Alaska. There's in um, Norway, uh, one in Wales actually, not far from here, and they send up pulses of electromagnetic energy, um, and the chemtrails form a plasma in the sky of heavy metals, which increases the, the conductivity of the of the atmosphere. Right. So, and Brzezinski boasts about Brzezinski himself, a big technocrat like Kissinger, boasts that whole continents can be under this mind control. It's called the woodpecker effect. So have you looked into that? Uh, harp? Yeah. Um, remember we had a book came, that came out that was so popular, Angels Don't Play This Harp? Do you remember that book? Yes, I interviewed Dr. Yes, I interviewed Mr. Begich, yeah. Right. Um, so that was a very good book. Um, I think Berg was one of the, the authors of that. That was a very good book. Um exposing one aspect of HARP, but I actually had an eyewitness who had been into the facility, and the facility in that area actually connects with a beast computer, and they're actually using it for something far more horrendous than just what the book HARP was explaining about. There, the, there's a deeper level of, of activity there, and that is mind control. Remember we were talking earlier, and you were talking about virtual you? Well, this beast computer that's located up yeah. there in that yeah. harp area has, uh, has data on every human being, has, has very uh, sophisticated virtual you programs, and you can stand there yeah, in that area... And you can, if you're a controller, you can say, what do we know about such and such person? And then the beast computer will tell you, and then they can say, okay, well, how can we get that person to kill his brother? And based on the virtual you type uh, programs, the computer will tell you how you can manipulate that, that event. So they actually use that harp site for far more than weather control, it's for actual control over the day-to-day -day activities of 
of the world, the globe. Um, and uh, yeah, we know they, we know they can each. Well, we know that each person has an individual uh, psychotronic frequency, if you like. Um, yes. So they can pin it down to within a few meters, even if you're in a crowd. Well, and and, and the whole I mean, idea uh, back then sound, sounded far-fetched, but now with the cell phones, people can realize, hey, the system can reach out and reach your cell phone. Don't you think it can reach out and reach you? Um and if it can reach out and reach your cell phone, don't you think that it can manipulate events around you? Yes, better believe that the events around you can be manipulated. Um, well, when can they control gonna, the world like God? That, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's all right. I was just saying, um, you're absolutely right. Yeah, when they, when they believe they're gods and separate species and run the world like gods, um, with the oncoming food riots that are, that are coming, uh, people are going to be uh, hungry and starving, and they may they may be able to control the, the minds of marauding hungry people. You know, which is another scary aspect. <laughs> yeah, um, they're not God, but they certainly are trying to develop godlike powers. Um, but constantly uh, giving the, the flip side of things, there are constant reminders from God himself that throws monkey wrenches in what they're trying to do that shows that they aren't God. You know, their powers are limited. And even though they have created an incredible system of power, an incredible system of intelligence gathering, um, and you can get a little bit of an idea of that just using your internet. Um, in spite of that, there are are daily reminders that their power is limited, and there is a God, a good God, and um, all knees will bow to this uh, to God at some point. And so, uh, in the middle of of seeing all of their power, I think we should should uh, not get mem mesmerized by it and take a look out there at the stars, take a look out at the flowers, the trees, and God's creation, and remind ourselves that uh, these people didn't create the stars. They didn't create uh, a tree. They didn't create us. And um, their powers are limited. Absolutely, Mr. Springfire, absolutely. Uh, weather warfare, indeed, I mean, we know they have the technology. They've boasted uh, Cohen from, uh, it was former defense secretary of the USA, admitted, yeah, we've got weather weapons. Well, uh, terrorists might use uh, tectonic weapons in the future. Um, why they speak about tectonic weapons when they don't have them is another thing. But um, <laughs> it's basically on record and very admitted now uh, that these top technologies exist. And we all, we've also learned that they're, they're roughly about 60 years ahead um, of what they show the public or let us play with, like mobile phones. But I believe you could use mobile phones broadcasting from the beaches of Normandy back to the USA. <laughs> so they're about 60 years ahead, so Lord knows what they have. I mean, the book of Revelations itself, I know you're a Christian and a God-fearing man, but the book of Revelations itself, is, it, it's a revealing, isn't it? It's a revealing. Uh -huh. And they've sought to dismantle Christianity throughout the ages. Uh, and then we have the King James Bible, which is almost total propaganda and, and ch changed around. And the language has been um, perverted in a way. So now the book of Revelations is, is looking more like a, a blueprint uh, Illuminati revealing, if you like. What's your thoughts on that? Well, they definitely uh, have, um, what's the word, uh, th an arrogance about the, the word of God. They have no fear of God. And when they, when they look at the Bible and they see the book of Revelations and Armageddon, they just laugh at the whole thing because 
they want to manipulate and use these biblical images uh, for their own agenda. And so you see them actively working to bring about an Armageddon scenario uh, to to create a Christ-like figure. When we hear about an Antichrist, people people think, well, he's going to be some evil personage. Well, their Antichrist is going to be a savior, you know. Um, so they're they're actively trying to manipulate these biblical images using uh, Christendom and the churches that they control to manipulate this. Um, and there's definitely that. Uh, uh, um, that aspect of things going on in a big way, uh, I don't think that that should uh, prevent us from being good people and believing in God, but it should should cause us not to just automatically jump on everything that some church puts out because uh, we, we have to be... Um, we have to use discernment. Some of these churches are are working uh, hand in glove with the elite. They're being financed by the elite. Um, they're being staffed by by chosen people from the elite, and um, they're they're working um, they're working to help enslave us. Uh, and an example of that here in, in the United States, back in about 1995, the Billy Graham uh, crusade people went through the entire United yeah. States and got all of the, the churches involved in going out and door-to-door identifying. They, they basically did what the uh, U.S. Census does – except they did it on a more higher level. They identified the uh, church affiliation or the religious belief of every person in the United States. Um, so let's say, uh, you know, let's use my house as an example. Well, they would mark down on the house that Fritz Springmeier attends such and such church, or Fritz Springmeier is a Buddhist, or Fritz Springmeier is an atheist, you know, they would identify that on their maps. And they were doing this under the banner of supposedly by by going through and identifying er where everybody worshipped, they would be um, helping the Christians evangelize the entire world by, by 2000. So I think the 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 banner name of of this whole activity was called Evangelism 2000 or something like that. It's been many years since I was I actually spoke with some of the leaders that were involved in this whole thing and it, it was just like flabbergasted me. I was just like, "Whoa, they're saving the Illuminati. They're saving the the US government whoever um is going to use this this information." They're saving them millions of dollars by having all of these church members go out and gather this information for them. So, anyway, the point is, is just don't have a an uh, automatic knee jerk re, re, uh, um, just don't have a knee jerk reaction that if a church proposes something, it's in your best interest. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that a lot of the pastors in uh, the priests in, in churches in America have been totally corrupted, paid by uh, FEMA to take your shots and advise your flock to take the deadly vaccine shots. And right. The government, if they come and round you up to a camp, it, it's okay. It's, 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 they love you. <laughs> and um, that's, that's very disturbing. I'm guessing that Billy Graham is a high-ranking Freemason, etc. And this goes on and on. What would you say to parents who, who are concerned about the indoctrination that kids are getting in school? I always advise people to hold school if they can and get them up to that washing, green washing scale. Oh, the, the public schools are, are absolutely scary. 
Wow. I, I mean, this is another conversation, another topic that that you could spend hours on. Um, wow, where to begin? Maybe I'll use an example of a school that my former wife taught at. She was a tenured teacher here in the Portland Public Schools. And the Portland Public Schools, uh, at, at in I think it was like 1990, forbid the word Christmas being used. The word Christmas was was forbidden to all students in public school because that was promoting Christ. Um, so it was illegal in school to say the word Christmas. I even had one high schooler who wrote a poem uh, which was, was using a Christmas poem as a parody um, you know, all through the, the house, not a creature was stirring. He used that poem to mock the fact that you weren't allowed to use the word, word Christmas in, uh, in a Portland public school. But what, are, what did they replace this with? Well, in the school that my wife was teaching at, they replaced it with a ceremony celebrating the return of Lucifer. And, um, they they put on a play for the parents where the kids came in and they have barcodes on their Whoa. their heads and some of the kids had uh, acceptable barcodes and some had unacceptable barcodes and she came home with the school program after this play and of course I'm 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 flooded with this kind of information it was just like yeah okay <laughs> one more thing and and all the stuff that's going on but I just happened to have gotten kind of a wild hair to to send on a copy of this program to Tex Mars. Tex Mars put it on his program. And then there was the next thing I know, a, a senator from Pennsylvania is calling me because he was up in arms because he was he couldn't believe that they kicked they kicked Christmas celebrations out of the Portland public schools and replaced it with a satanic uh, occult ritual. Yeah, that that's that's just yeah, one example yeah. of of how <laughs> incredibly scary these public schools have gotten. And I mean, I could go on and on. They're uh, they're, they're indoctrinating our yeah. kids. Uh, I was in prison with a, a young man, and half of the kids are being given Ritalin, which uh, the difference between Ritalin and cocaine is is you have to be a chemist to tell the difference because they're basically essentially the same thing. He was angry at the government because they turned him into a drug addict by the Ritalin that they gave him in school, in public school. They required him to take Ritalin and turn him into a drug addict, and then when he became a drug addict, he, he went to prison. Um, so the public schools, I, I mean, there, there aren't any, uh, I don't know of any words really, uh, capable of describing the the how ter- terrifying and horrible they have become. Um, so, so your advice would be, your your advice may be um, get get your kids out of school and homeschool them if you can. Yes, yes. The 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 kids that are being homeschooled are are it's night and day the contrast between them. Uh, the, yeah. the the kids oh, that yeah. are homeschooled are actually. Uh, they're 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 turning out to be normal kids like you would expect the kids to be. The kids that are going to the public school, it's absolutely frightening what they're turning out to be. Great. The school is in a way of controlling the morality of the child. By the time they get back to the to the parents in the evening, who they're spending less time with, the state has brought up their kids for them. They've, they've given them their reality, their morality, and anything the parents say to them after that is um, a moot point. It's just not, they just don't take it in. They have no moral power over the children now. Now, while the, the parochial schools are slightly better than the, the public schools, there's a lot of horror stories that that I could I could talk about coming out of the parochial schools too. So yeah, your best option is to homeschool. Um, 
Yeah, you know, I, I'll, I, I hope one, we'll one of my, uh, go ahead. Sorry. sorry, please carry on. Oh, I, I was just, uh, well, actually, I just lost my thought. Go ahead. Uh, you, this doesn't have to be a one-way okay, conversation. Uh, you, you know so much, and it's, it's really a delight and a joy to learn, learn from you, and, and, uh, I appreciate you, Patrick, and and so I hope this is a two-way conversation. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, no, no. Um, there is one subject uh, that I know you don't know a lot about, but because I know there's a lot of listeners, uh, more than usual listening, I wanted to get the chemtrail subject um, into the to the fray, into the mix, if you like. Um, chemtrails, for, for those who don't know, are not chemtrails. They're highly toxic um, bioweapons being spurted out from unmarked military jets. They're not contrails. They don't dissipate after 20 or 30 seconds like a condensation trail always has done. They hang around and form banks of cloud because they're full of heavy metals, aluminium, barium salts, and radioactive strontium. They're the three main ingredients in, in the in the pot, if you like, and it's happening all around the world. And as we as we talked about earlier, we touched on HARP uh, working with the, um, the conductivity of the chemtrails to produce uh, a plasma and utilize mind control techniques further. But um, it's even nicer to admit that um, it's 20% dimmer now across the planet. Um, I gave a talk on chemtrails a couple of months ago, about a month ago. There's a DVD available, so it's a good chance for me to, to plug it. It's £3.50. You can contact me at freetruthshow at hotmail.co.uk or through the station or through YouTube, Free Truth Show, Facebook, Free Truth Show. And um, that helps out with the bills and the broadband and the internet and things. But, um, uh, we're under attack. We're under a massive attack across the planet, and I, d I don't see the next generation uh, being fit enough to stop it. Uh, we're probably the last generation fit enough and healthy enough to, to understand what's happening. If we're told, the media will not report on it. The governments cannot, are not allowed to talk about it. Um, it's a massive black operation hidden in plain sight. The most extreme example that's hidden in games high, as you can ever imagine. All you've got to do, folks, is look up in the sky and see the trails for yourself. And the water samples, it's poisoning the rivers, the environment, it's just the elite are blackening the earth, and it's been going on about 15 years. My question to you, Mr. Springmeyer, you right. do understand the, the different levels, um, the multifaceted attacks on the human mind uh, through mind control through triggers, um, we know that they have, uh, from your chart, they have a whole charts of how to do it, and it's very exact science for them. What do you, what kind of implant <laughs> would you give these pilots, knowing what, what, what they're spraying, what would you say to a pilot before he gets up and, and pushes that button? What kind of mind control must these thousands of pilots be under? Wow, that is a good question. Uh, I've never been uh, asked that question before and never thought about it. Uh, yes, what would what would motivate somebody to turn off yeah. their their humanity and to do this? One of the one of the ways that the mind control works is a lot of the people don't really fully understand what they're being called to do. For instance, an assassin, when he comes up and pulls the trigger, he may be under the the illusion that, that the gun that he has in his hand, because he's been hypnotized, to think that this is just a toy gun and he's just playing something out. And so one one doesn't know exactly what runs through the mind of these pilots when they do this. But you're right. It has to be hundreds and thousands of pilots 
that are doing this. A lot of times, like you say, it's a military plane. And I know when I was in the military, they had trained me to just follow orders. That's the only way that the military is going to work is for people to mindlessly jump when they're told to jump, mindlessly carry out an order when they're given an order. And so uh, they may well just simply be following orders, but then there may be a, another uh, uh, part of, of the, the population of, of guilty pilots that have been uh, given hypnotic suggestions that suggest all kinds of, of um, things so that they really aren't aware of what they're, what they're doing. Um, two th while we're on the subject, I think the two most uh, prominent events in my life that prove beyond a doubt, I mean beyond a shadow of a doubt, about the chemtrails, and because some of our listening audience may still have some doubts, but uh, sure. a young man sent me a film that was made of one of the planes, that and you can actually see the pilot. That there was a plane that came up upon one of these planes that was was doing the chemtrails, and you can actually see the pilot flips off the switch on the chemtrails and the plane quits creating chemtrails and then at a certain point he switches it back on and and starts making some new chemtrails it's not yeah. it's not a con trail and you can you can clearly see the whole process uh, another event that happened um, that in my life is one day I looked up in the air, and it was a checkered board pattern, just like the lines on a chessboard, except it was far more extensive than the lines on a chessboard. But you had a series of maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 uh, parallel lines going one direction, and then the other direction were chemtrails of about 20 or 25 it perpendicular to them going the other direction people this these are not planes making this <laughs> this is <laughs> when you see when you see lines across the sky parallel in one direction and then then a whole checkerboard pattern the other this is chemtrails you can't account for this kind of 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 um i mean the entire sky was covered with this and how people can go about their daily lives and not realize that we're being sprayed, it's just, it really shows how people have just gotten themselves into a state of mind that, um, that, 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 that they almost believe that their government's like their mom. You know, mom can't do any wrong. Um, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, so those two things in my own life... Uh, were events that there was no way to get around facing the honest facts of like what Patrick is saying, we're being sprayed, they're doing these chemtrails, and it's being done right, in, uh, right above us, right on top of us. Time to wake up, isn't it? It is indeed. I mean, uh, the fact that not many people notice it or believe that it's normal even if they do notice it is absolutely nuts and, and indicative of mass mind control they're not worried about it because if if this was a problem a real problem the media would be talking about it right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> supposedly yeah. The, the media has people you know, conditioned to, to believe that they're going to tell us all of the news that we need to know yep and Brzezinski, remember folks, Brzezinski said, um, I think his book was Between Two Ages, uh, it'll, in the future they won't be able to remember last night's news headlines. <laughs> yeah. That's, we'll that's so true. Their opinion for them. And yeah. already you can hear people in the pub saying, word for word, 
Exactly. Well, there's too many people on the planet anyway, and there's too many people on the planet. Which is also another myth. There's plenty of room on God's earth for everybody, ten times more than the numbers today. It's just that it's in the hands and bottlenecks by a few elite masterminds. It needn't be like this. So there's not too many people on the planet, folks. It's not your fault. And um, you kids are being brainwashed at school that you're the enemy if you take too many baths. Yes. Pathetic. Yes. <laughs> the car you're driving is causing global weather changes that are yeah. just going to destroy the planet and on and on. Yes. And, and people have bought, bought yeah, the lies, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, yeah. CO2 is, 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 is not a naturally occurring gas. It's perfectly natural, and we need more of it, actually. It's actually your enemy. Yeah. The Pope said themselves, uh, the enemy of mankind is mankind itself. Well, you would say that if you're a, a, a psycho babble, psychopathic uh, <laughs> scumbag. That's what you say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So chemtrails are real, folks. Um, it's time to deal with it. And actually, my advice is to bypass government altogether. Uh, they, they don't love you. They're not working for your best interest. Bypass the media, apart from the local media, which I, I've had some success with now and again. Uh, the media are not going to report on it. So you have to bypass the government. If you're worried about being sprayed, and you're wondering why everyone is dying of cancer, one in two, or the allergies through the roof, so-called allergies, and the asthma through the roof, and you want to do something about it, uh, I would suggest bypassing the government, bypassing the media, and just getting out on the streets and telling millions of people as much as you can, or start your own radio show. In fact, switch off this radio show right now and start telling people. We don't have much time. People are coughing and splurting everywhere I look in England. But, um, oh, and by the DVD. Um... We've just got a few minutes left. Um, you, you might have noticed I'm a bit more jolly than when we began, because uh, 43 minutes ago, it was my birthday. <laughs> hey! Hey, yeah, now, congratulations! 43. Happy birthday! Thanks, man. <laughs> hey, thanks, Richie. Good man. Yeah, well, it's the, one of the best birthday presents I've ever had. Speaking of Spit, Spit Spring Mile. Oh, thank you. You come with an awful great deal. And it seems like we still haven't had the time, in fact, um, to cover everything. And I hope, will you, will you consider joining us again on air sometime soon? I will consider that. Um, we may have to give it a break for a little while because uh, I have, I, I'm so busy. But, uh, of course. Um, yeah, I've really, enjoyed, I've really enjoyed being on your program, Patrick. You are the the first time, and I've been giving radio shows for something like 20 years, except for the eight years in there that I was locked up. Um, right. I, I, I've given a lot of radio shows, and you have to be number one as far as just giving me the floor and just letting me talk away. And... and I hope the the audience can appreciate what you've done because on a lot of these subjects, you've allowed me to go beyond a sound bite. Uh, a lot of these subjects are very complicated, and especially when the people have been uh, programmed to believe something else, it's really hard to get into them. And, um, of course, I may have stepped on a lot of people's toes, and built a lot of resistance in, uh, but uh, at least you've given me more of an opportunity to develop an answer to to some of these questions, some of these topics. Um, these are not easy topics. They're emotionally difficult for people, and um, I'm, I'm so glad that I have been allowed to go beyond a sound bite in just answering them. So thank you. And, and again, uh, uh, part of the answer for, for what we've been talking about is people need to love life, love reality. They're trying to get us into this uh, um, state of mind where all we want to do is, is, is leave reality 
and go into some kind of fiction, you know, party the rest of our life or be drunk all of our life or be in some drug trip. Uh, people are ex trying to escape okay, reality. And the answer is, is to love reality, love life. And so that's great that you're, you're having this birthday, and that's the kind of thing that we want to celebrate. Um, I love life. I'm glad Patrick loves life. And I hope and encourage everybody that's a listener to, to mm -hmm. love life. Well, we're in the business of stepping on people's toes. It's called survival. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fritz Springmar, author of The Bloodlines of the Illuminati. It's been my great pleasure to speak with you, and I wish you all the success in the world, sir, and God bless. Thank you. God bless you too, Patrick. It's been such a privilege and, and a pleasure. Thank you, and, I, and, and goodbye to all your listeners. I hope I'm... I'm on again soon, and, and, and we can spend some more time together. Absolutely, and thank you to everyone in the chat that's joined us tonight. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to everyone's questions. And um, it's all that remains is to bid you farewell, and uh, as Mr. Frank Springmeyer says, uh, love life and love reality. All the best now, and um, birthday greetings from the Free Truth Show, and fight the New World Order with every fiber of your being. Good night.